to do here in a second is I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to start here on a basic presentation. Um, typically, here's what we do. We, we have an hour to go over 30 years worth of information. So I, I try to make it short and sweet and go over the most important things, uh, not waste your time, you know, not, not, not spending 30 minutes talking about the light bulbs inside the machine and what colors they are because nobody cares and it's not going to help you in any way, shape or form. So I'm just going to give you a quick breakdown about what we're going to cover. But before we do that, what I like to do first is dive into some of the questions that you have initially come up with uh, so that allows me uh, to tailor a little bit about what I'm saying. We're going to do two basic things in our call today. We're going to talk about the simple science, how it works. Uh, and the conditions associated with it. So that way we can communicate it to the, the patients effectively and understand what we're doing. And then we're gonna learn how to use the machine in terms of protocols, the different conditions and, and how you put it on a spot and things like that. So you guys are comfortable uh, yourselves using it on yourselves and then using it on the patients. Uh, does that sound good? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here and start here uh, just so you can see this uh, uh, presentation. Um, before we use that, let me ask you this. What questions do you guys have? I'm sure you only have one or two. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have a million questions. Let's, uh, let's dive into the questions initially. Uh, so that way we can then, then go back and cover all the things we need to in detail. We gave a bunch of them to Jack last week. He said he was going to run them past you, so you could already refer those and uh, get back with us on that. So I didn't know if uh, you were able to, to handle those that Jack gave you. No, I've, I've not seen them. Okay. Put them in Skype. He's put a message. Jack put a message. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, down here, what we do, we, we use lights ourselves. I don't know if you're familiar with a company out of California, but uh, they're called Clarence. They have uh, what's called sympathetic, sympathetic resonant technology. They use lights also on the same frequency as the cells vibrate on. We use those uh, lights also down here in belts and in singles. They're called optimizers. And we use those on certain parts of the body, too, to help uh, heal the body and speed up, speed up healing. These lights also, when you put them, uh, wrap them around the elbow or put them in the belly button, they clear up uh, gallstones, uh, uh, kidney stones, liver stones. So we're familiar with the uh, energy and technology and lights and how to use them. And we use, uh, uh, we use nutrition also with those lights to speed up healing in the body. So we were looking for something else that uh, uh, works along those lines. We found it with your machine, and we're hoping that we're able to train, learn how to use that for many of the different problems that we run across in the clinic. I see over 200 to 250 people a week down here, and uh, yep. we're just looking for technology to work on people and, and help them out. <clears throat> Gotcha. So you have you have protocol questions, but I think more of what I, I'm going for, and, and believe it or not, I get this question is, okay, we've had the machine for a week. We haven't turned it on yet because we're not sure where the plug goes. <laughs> okay. Th those are more of the questions I was asking if you had. You, you, you know how to plug it in. You know how to turn it on. You guys are comfortable using all, all of those things. Yes? Yeah. We do. We had, a, we had a question, though. We noticed okay. that this thing, yeah. your, the machine we have doesn't pulse until it's on the red button. Is that correct? Yep, yep, it doesn't work until you push the green button. Yeah, but then it switches on the red button and then it pulses. It doesn't pulse on the green button, it pulses on the red button. When it's off. No, what happens is when you push the green button, the red button lights up and that lets you know what button to push next. Oh, okay. So you turn the machine okay. on, the blue light comes on and you push the blue button, and then the green light comes on and the fans kick on. And then you push the green right. button and the unit pulses. And once you push the green button, the red light illuminates. And, and each time the button is lit up, right. that tells you what button you're supposed to use next. Okay. We're okay then. We're on the right track. We don't have okay. to. Yeah. And it, it, this sounds so lame that we had to do it. Instead of just having a green and a red, a go and a stop, for CE Medical Mark, for certain parts of Europe, you have to have an intermediary switch. So let's say my four-year-old child doesn't just walk in the room and turn it on and it runs. There has to be a secondary step, if you will. So that's why that blue button exists. It turns the fans or the cooling system on. And then once you push the blue button, it's green and red and green and red forever. But the whole reason that's there was just for regulatory. So if, if, that, if that makes sense, if the blue was how you represent cooling. So we used blue, right? Because it's, you know, cl closest to cooling. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, typically that's, that, that's where we'll start is ask operation questions. Do you know how to plug it in? Do you know how to connect the connectors? Do you, do, did that, all of that make sense in the manual? Um, because believe it or not, we get lots of technical questions initially related to that. I didn't know how to connect the applicator properly and I didn't want to mess up the machine. So can we go over that? So that, that, that was typically just, just for starters, that's what we do. Here's then what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the simple science. Uh, I recognize that you are familiar with light technology and the technology you're familiar uh, with. This is going to be a little bit different, obviously, as you know. There's there's some similarities, but there's some differences also. So we're going to cover a little bit of that. Um, but the biggest thing we're going to talk about is is the protocols and how to get the biggest single single biggest results. Here's the most important thing that I'm going to tell you today is I've done this for 15 years. I have all the protocols in the world on a nice, neat piece of paper that, that work great. But your intuition as a practitioner is the single biggest ally that we have in the field. And I want you to rely on that 10 out of 10 times when it comes to protocols, okay? It may be that just as an example, just a random example, we talk about uh, acute shoulder pain, right? And I give you the protocol, hey, here's how every doctor does it with the machine and they get great results. But you, Dr. David, are this person's practitioner for the last 12 years. And even though they're saying it's a shoulder pain, you know them better. And maybe it's really related to a back problem or a neck problem or it's something else. Go with what your gut tells you. OK. Make, make sense. Yes, sir. OK, cool. Cool. It's, it's the single most important thing that I tell people. Don't be married to the protocols. Be willing to have a wandering eye here and there and the stuff that and the concepts that we go over because you as the practitioner know far more about uh, the individual case. OK, um, the basics. What is it? This is a presentation I can email to you, so we don't need to go over the history of the technology, uh, especially with our limited time. I want to talk just the, the, the basics um, and you guys can see my screen. Yes. Just to make sure. Yes. OK, cool. Cool. Sorry, just again, just technology. I just want to make sure I, you guys can see what I, I'm looking at. So I'm going to give you the simple explanation of how our technology works. Okay. Um, uh, this is like a battery charger for the cells. Okay. We, instead of uh, targeting a certain set of frequencies on the electromagnetic spectrum, ultrasound technology uses sound waves. Okay. TENS uses a, a very small set of frequencies on the electromagnetic spectrum. High power PEMF excites all of the frequencies at once. It is a broadband discharge across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, about 0.25 hertz to 250,000 megahertz. Okay, so initially, the simple answer to understand, gosh, how come everybody feels it in their bad spots, right? I have a bad shoulder, Mary has a bad neck, Fred has a bad hip, and we bring that loop nearby and they go, holy smokes, that's a foot away from my bad shoulder. How did you know? And they think it's a really smart machine. It's not that it's a really smart machine. We're exciting all of the frequencies all at once. The cells that have either taken on damage, injury, or as you mentioned, are, are out of tune, they simply resonate to the pulse. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a physics reaction. They, they, they harmonize to the pulse. And we as people go, holy smokes, Doc, how did you know that this was where my pain was? And it's not that we, I mean, sure, we'll, we'll say thanks for the credit, but it's, it's, it's the, the frequencies are, are matching or harmonizing. Okay, so one thing you're going to experience, Doc, much faster than other practitioners because of your experience, you're going to get patients that will say this, hey, Doc, I think the machine is broken today. Why? It's not thumping in my bad spot in my back the way it's used to. Okay, and just example, Mary's come in with a low back problem. We've done six sessions. She feels it thump on her spot a foot away. And then the seventh session, she's moving that loop all over her low back. And she's like, I can't get it to like hurt or ache in my bad spot. Doc, I think the machine's broken. We get that a lot and we smile. Okay, and for the scientific reason, it's because the cell's gone back into tune. It's not resonating to the damage anymore. And we experience that typically when, when the patient has a healing or a breakthrough. They'll say it doesn't hurt the way that it used to anymore on my bad spot. Okay. And that is a really good sign for us because it always coincides with healing. Okay. If they're not feeling it on their bad spot, it's either not on their bad spot or we've, we've created some healing. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. This is simply a battery charger for the cells. When we put electricity into a circle, we create a corresponding magnetic field, okay? TENS, you use little electrodes or STEM units, you use little electrodes to literally put current into the body that forces the muscles to move. We are creating electricity at a distance. Uh, with that machine you have, the HD, I mean, we're, we have a magnetic field that two to three feet off of both sides, you can feel it. 
Okay, and uh, what that does is it allows us to use a lot more power and allows us to get a lot deeper inside of the body. And also we can treat the problem area a lot longer because it does not create heat. Okay, so a simple way to explain the, to the patient what this is, is it's simply a battery charger for your cells. Every time we have injury or illness in, or disease inside of the body, part of it is related to the energy at the cellular level, the transmembrane potential. This restores the transmembrane potential exactly like charging, recharging a battery. Okay. Um, and the byproduct of that, and uh, look, a, a, as you go on, and I know you've read some of the testimonial and the case stories and things like that, you're going to get these amazing testimonials. Wow, my Lyme's disease went away, my partially torn ligament healed, my old back injury, and MS. And th those are four completely different conditions, not related to each other, but energetically they are. Okay, and, and, and you get all these, the, these case stories that have nothing to do with each other, but they all have the same thing is that it helped or it worked. And, and the reason being is we're resetting the cell, the cell's reading its little DNA code and it's going back to work. Having said that, I, what I wanted to go, where I wanted to go with that is that uh, the, uh, uh, there's certain conditions we don't get any results with, okay? Genetic disorders is the sort of the one thing that I tell practitioners. This is the one thing that over the years, PEMF therapy, we sort of throw our hands up and say, eh, we don't know how much it's going to help. Because no matter how healthy the cell is, no matter how much we replicate a healthier version of the cell and our immune system is, is great and all that, if there's a problem in the DNA, each time we replicate that cell, we're replicating a corrupted DNA. And that's where other things come into play. I just want to point that out because there are, are a few things you're not going to see results with. And, and it typically comes, comes into play when it's genetic stuff. Um, I'm going to talk about the attributes of the pulsed field. There are 12 known scientific attributes. And what we do is we talk about these attributes and we associate them to a variety of conditions. So as opposed to just telling you, yeah, hey, this works great on inflammation. We're going to talk briefly about why uh, for the, the mechanism action and scientifically why it works. Uh, uh, so A, you can understand and B, you feel confidence in, in using it for, for the different things, obviously, that you're going to be using on the patient. Um, the first thing that we get, and you get this uh, with any sort of uh, uh, energy type of therapy, is atomic excitement. The energy seems to stim stimulate the spin of the electron, and it stores energy to last for three days. Uh, how we create energy at the, at the very, very basic level and the cellular level is we have an electron that rotates around the atom. And based on the speed of that revolution, the byproduct is energy production at the cellular level, things like ATP. Okay, when, this, when the revolution of the electron around these atoms slows down, the byproduct of that is lowered cellular energy. Now, the cause can be anything from uh, I got hit with a baseball to I have a third stage cancer, right? The, the, the pathology behind it doesn't matter just for this uh, particular example. What is causing it uh, is directly related to the spin of the electron. This machine comes in there. And like a perpetual motion engine getting restored or turned back on, it restores the spin of the electron around the atom. Uh, we get a production of ATP at the cellular level. We get an increase of mitochondrial activity, activity. We are energizing our cell, if you will. Okay. Uh, the energy lasts for a couple of days. So you will find with people, they don't need to use the machine every day. The, 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 you, don't, you don't fill up your car with gas or petrol every day. And in that same vein, you use it every other day or every couple of days. Um, second thing that we see is the molecules tend to align slightly with each magnetic pulse. This makes the molecules easier to combine, especially when excited. Uh, two quick points here is the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So you as a practitioner, if you're trying to get nutrients and uh, hydration into the cells, if you have a lot of gunk in the body getting it in the way, uh, Rouleau's index, slag, toxic waste, a whole bunch of things, it, it takes longer for your therapies to work. It takes more for it to work. The first thing that this does is gets the junk out of the way. And the second thing that it does is because there's a lot of minerals and, uh, that are electromagnetically sens sensitive, it brings them out or brings them to the surface. So if you're using any sort of mineralization, uh, so lots of people use electrolytes, sodium or potassium, uh, things like that, you're going to get a better result using the machine. And even further to that, if they are uh, hydrated, the more hydrated the user is, the better results we get from the machine because water passes current much better than air. Uh, just as an aside, we have a prototype in the works for a pulse spa. So we're building, if you will, 
as crude as this is going to sound, we're building a machine into a hot tub because we are finding that some of the applications using water as the facilitator are, are better. Good example is fibromyalgia. We're, we're getting even better results having somebody in the water and treating them that way. Um, so again, just tying back to the molecules, it, it's, it, it, it's all about electromagnetism. Um, the next thing that we see, and uh, this is a nice little test for your patients. You could get go to Petco or uh, uh, one of the, 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 the animal supply places and get pH paper, just a little litmus paper that you do on your tongue. And the pH of the water inside of you will shift and it shifts significantly and it maintains if the person maintains their sessions. So uh, just as an example, you have a, a chronic pain patient that is highly toxic and they come in and they're at a pH of 7.0. Uh, each time that you do the session, before and after, do this little pH test because you're going to notice their, their pH will shift. And after three or four sessions, they're going to be up to about 8.0. Um, as you know, we can't shift the blood pH, but we can shift the water pH inside of us. And that is significant for healing because uh, here's a real good example. We see this in baseball all the time. I'm this age, so this isn't old, but forgive me, the old guys, 38, 39 years old baseball players, they wake up each morning and they have, you know, five, six, seven centimeters swelling on their knees from running every day. They use this machine simply to get rid of the swelling overnight and it works overnight. And one of the big things is because we are converting sodium to potassium. Okay. The byproduct of that is it's an increase of oxygen uh, and we get a pH shift. So as we go a little bit further down with the attributes, we'll see that where that ties into another one. But uh, it's fantastic because how do you measure progress with an inflammatory response? A lot of times it's visual checks, right? We, we take a, a meter or a measurement thing and wrap it around the knee to measure the swelling. Well, here is another measurement of our infl inflammatory response. We can check their pH and see how the fluids inside of them are responding to treatment. Um, the next thing is the surface tension of the fluids in the body can shift up to 16 fold. This allows the fluids to flow into cell gates much more efficiently or the lymph to thin and flow. I did a training last week and a doctor gave me a great example. He has a patient that cannot get out of bed. They are, I think, uh, uh, morbidly obese, 500 pounds. So they cannot move and they are having, uh, they have blockages in their lymphatic blockages in their hips, in their feet, in their armpits. And how do you get somebody to move and create lymphatic drainage if they can't get out of bed? So what this practitioner did is he brought the machine to this, this lady's house or whatever and treated the hips, treated the feet, treated underneath the arm because you can get the lymph to pump, to thin and flow. Um, a really good example that I, that I show sort of visual for this is the treatment of water. If you guys take two bottles of water and you treat one, you give it a 15 minute session. And then the next day you take that bottle and an unpulsed bottle of water and pour it into a brown lunch sack you know, the, the kind we send our kids to school with, right? So it sounds a little bit funny if you can imagine yourself standing in a room holding two lunch sacks that are full of water. But what you'll see is the pulsed water will start to bead through the bag and burst to the bottom of the bag much faster than the other. What we're doing is we're reducing the surface tension. The water is wetter. It flows into the cells faster, more efficiently. It gets through areas that are partially blocked more efficiently. Um, it, it, if you will, it makes the water wetter. Does this make all of this make sense so far? Any questions uh, about what we are what we we've talked about to date? Yes, sir. So before I drink all my water, should I put it in the middle of that uh, loop and uh, charge it for ten to fifteen minutes? Yes, sir. And, and and what I want you guys to do, okay? I look. I've been doing this for fifteen years, so I sometimes I sound so cavalier and say, "Hey, it does this," and "Hey, it does that," and that's only because I've seen it. But it took me a long time to get there. One of the tests that they did for me is they did this. I want you guys to get two bottles of water unopened and pull good like it's a patient. Give it a good twenty minute treatment and don't pulse the other, and leave it overnight tonight and wait till you come back in the morning. Let it sit like we gave it a treatment, right? A, a patient a treatment. Open the bottles up tomorrow morning and do the Pepsi challenge. Do a taste test. It's going to blow you away. You, you'll be able to taste a difference with the water. You'll be able to see and smell a difference. I know it sounds it, it sounds weird, but you got to try it because it, it dramatic it's dramatically different. If there's more oxygen in the in the water, if we're increasing the alkalinity, then it should have this this change. And so uh, it, it's it's kind of cool to see. And how long does it last? Same. same. It's about two to three days. Okay, just just like same with same with a uh, uh, patient. Same, same with the treatment of a patient. So, uh, and typically it's, it's about eight hours after. The next thing that I'm going to tell you to do, 
Okay, I'm not kidding when I tell you this. The next product that we're coming out has nothing to do with healthcare. We are making a wine energizing system that we're going to sell to mid to high end restaurants to take their crappy five dollar wine and turn it into expensive wine. Okay, so this is the fun test that I want you guys to do. Go out now. I'm not a wine drinker, but it still, it, you know, get grape juice if you have to. Get something so you can taste the difference. Go out and do the same test I told you, but with two bottles of the exact same cheap wine. You know, get two buck chuck from Trader Joe's or something like that and do the test because with wine, with the sugars and everything, it's dramatic. It ages wine overnight. And it, it, it again, it's one thing for us as humans to say, yeah, I think my shoulder feels better. And it's another thing for chemical composition to change. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, typically I found that of all the things that we do with this machine, the office staff loves doing the wine test the best. So that's always a fun thing too. <laughs> Um, so, next thing that we'll talk about is the, yeah, go ahead. Okay, I do have one question. Okay, so yeah. on the, you know how like ozonation puts the oxygen in the water and it makes the pH better and all that? Could you, could we use this machine just for like water every day? Would it make the water? Absolutely you could. Yep, absolutely you can. Yes. So let me let me tell you a, a short story. Okay, it's a little out there. It, it is out there, but I was there. Okay, so I, I feel comfortable telling the story because I was there. How I got I, I got involved with this technology. I, I got, if you will, the Ford Model T. There was a previous version of this technology called the Papini from Greece. Before I made my machine, and there was others. There was just this one device, and I worked with the company that was doing clinical trials in the United States. The short version of of this story is that there, whose husband had cancer that was so ill he couldn't come into the clinic and she would bring him two jugs of pulsed water like every week. Nine, ten months mm. of her walk, working, working at this clinic, one day she shows up with this guy and everybody's wondering who this guy is. And she says, it's JB, he's better. And he hadn't been able to come in for treatment, but he had been drinking that pulsed water for eight or nine months. Okay, wow. that's the most extreme case that, that I've ever seen. I've met the guy, I've shaken his hand, he, he told us the story, and he, I mean, I've, I've met a lot of cancer patients, and, and the one thing that is common is they all seem to want to tell the truth and tell you their story, which is a good thing. Um, and this, the, you know, that's, that's the most extreme case. So on the shorter cases, when I'm in a situation where I can't use the machine, I pull the water and I take it with me. I always have. It, 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 there's there just is a difference um and the single biggest i mean the single biggest way is gonna sound funny try it and taste it yourself try it and see you know because you'll know you'll know your own body better than everybody else uh -huh. okay um and i mean this this sort of ties into the next thing we're going to talk about with the red blood cells uh separating okay if you look at the before and after in the upper left hand corner that is before and after a session and the the far pick on the upper left-hand corner, that is not a good situation in, in the blood. That's dark field microscopy. I assume you guys don't know what this is. You guys may have it in your office, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, it can check, you can check your blood uh, uh, using this incredible technology, and you can see if it's, if it's uh, basically looking at the blood, you can see what type of state, state of health this person is in. Um, when we use our machine, you are storing the actual electrical charge of the cell, a negative charge. And if you know anything about magnets, right, even Big Shack, you can take two fridge magnets, but if they're both negative, negative, or positive, positive, what happens when he tries to push them together? Shack looks like, you know, not, not Shaquille O'Neal. He looks like a clown because he's like, I can't push these together because they all have that same charge. And that happens to your blood. Okay, when you use this machine. So some of the visual things that you guys are going to see is people that have circulatory issues, their cheeks, their hands, their feet will get flushed or they will all of a sudden complain of a temperature increase. This is a real good one, Doc. I wanted to tell you. My mom uh, was a longtime cigarette smoker. We finally got her, off, got her off of it about six or seven years ago. And the biggest thing that she used to hate about my machine when she was a cigarette smoker, I'd give her a treatment. She's her back and her shoulders. For about 30 to 45 minutes after treatment, her hands and her feet were like super hot and sweaty. She hated it. And the second she stopped smoking, that went away. So we knew we're increasing her circulation and all of a sudden she's, you know, her body is regulating and she's feeling heat in an area she's used to feeling cold. And uh, you're going to get these things like that that are real good, good, good measurements. Um, 
The vascular, we, we see this also because the vascular system relaxes. If you do blood pressure before and after each session, you will see this. Uh, people with high blood pressure, over time, their blood pressure is going to balance out. We're basically uh, uh, dilating the, the, the femoral arteries. and Basically, we're dilating the, all of the blood passageways. But we're adding an extra lane into the highway when there's traffic. So the, the, the other thing that you want to do is anybody that has headaches, migraines, things like that, we want to treat them on the machine, but we don't treat their head. We treat their inner thighs. Okay, and the goal is we're getting the femoral artery to engorge, to dilate, to create more flow for the blood. So, uh, as an example, if I have three personal testimonials where this changed my life. One of them is migraines. I don't have migraines anymore. Um, I get this little stargazer in one eye versus three days of being down and out and debilitated. And how that came about was when I would get the mig the indication that a migraine was coming on, I would just treat my inner thigh. And doing that for about three weeks changed my life. Have not had an issue since. It's like I trained my brain to uh, to, to dilate when when the headaches come on. So, and this is I, I'm telling you this story because this will happen a lot. You will notice this quite a bit with all sorts of circulatory issues. Um, oops. Uh, there is a systemic response to the session. Many report that the, the, they feel the body's functions have been fine-tuned, and oftentimes the targeted problem doesn't get better. Things not expected to get better first uh, will, and then there's an overall sense of well-being is another report. Okay, fibromyalgia is, is, is one that's going to take you guys a little bit of time. Chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr, Guillain-Barre, chronic diseases. So, so a patient coming in, getting a 20 or 30 minute session, they may not be pain free after the first session. But the first thing they may report to you is, you know what? I just felt better yesterday. I was in a good mood yesterday. I felt good. Okay. An overall sense of well being, or I slept amazing. I had the best sleep of my life last night. My back still hurts or I still feel like crap, but I slept great. Those are typically the first things that we see, uh, uh, especially in a chronic disease state. Okay, and then the last point tied to this, you guys will find this a lot also, is that uh, a lot of the times the targeted problem we're working on doesn't get better first, but a different one. For uh, example, I see this a lot. With baseball, you have people doing the most unnatural motion in the, for, for their, their shoulder, right? We're, we're, our bodies are designed to throw underhand and we throw overhand. So we get a lot of baseball pitchers that halfway through a season – my arm hurts. Well, of course. So we start working on their arm and I give them, let's say, three or four sessions in a week. And I'll say, okay, Joe, how's your arm? And they'll say, eh, you know, it's not really much better. I'll say, really? You didn't notice anything from the machine? And they'll say, oh, you know what? My trick knee feels awesome. I mean, it hasn't felt this good in years. But my shoulder, not so much. And I've never put the loop anywhere near his knee. I didn't even know about his knee. I was spending the whole time trying to fix Joe, the baseball pitcher's right shoulder. And uh, his knee is better. Okay, and I'm sure you've experienced this with your other technologies and therapies also. Even though we want we want to target a problem, it's the body that prioritizes healing. So something else gets better or the energy goes to another place and works on another problem. Okay? Totally normal. Totally normal. This happens. We just keep on doing what we're doing. Um, ne next thing that we see from a scientific standpoint is recovery time from a fracture is at least one-third of the normal time of healing. It's more... But I, I, I try to stick to the science and say this is what the, 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 no, the, the double blind journals say. We see with our machine faster. That's why I put a couple of case studies up there. Any sort of, and I'm generalizing here, bone-related issue, you guys are going to get a fantastic result with the machine. Non-healing of fractures, non-union non of fractures, cartilage-related issues, anything that can, can, can sort of pathology can trace back to the bone, you're going to get an awesome result. Bone bruises, all, all sorts of things like that. Um, I'm going to talk about just a couple more of the, uh, uh, the these these last two attributes, the scientific attributes, and it will dive right, we'll, we'll take just a break to answer questions, but we'll dive right into the protocols on how this ties into the specific conditions. Okay. Um, if you drop me in an elevator and you can only get me to talk for 30 seconds, which I'm sure you could tell is, is difficult enough as it is, I would only tell you one thing about this machine, okay? And that's what we're talking about now. It's called electroporation or electroporosis. Again, guys, I assume nobody knows nothing about the technology of the machine. So if I'm telling you stuff you already know scientifically, forgive me. I, again, I just assume nobody knows nothing, okay? Um, with our machine, we get a very strong phenomenon where we electromagnetically stimulate the cell gates. 
Okay, and all of the gates are stimulated and they remain open for about two to three hours after a session. Okay, so how water gets into our cells is there's a there's a, a pit or a pore or a gate where water goes in. How toxins, how nutrients go in and out, there's all these little pores or gates. And what we do is we stimulate the body so it go it opens up about two for for about two to three hours after the treatment. There are multiple reasons that this is beneficial. And also, this is you power PEMF. Um, different technologies of, of these different attributes, but there's nothing as effective with electroporation as, as ter in terms of high power PEMF. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you an example that I use in Europe a lot, and that is what is a good cup of tea and, and biscuit? Okay, and a good cup of tea and a biscuit like the picture right in front of you. Can you see that one that says the phenomenon of electroporation? Okay, the expensive biscuits that you use when you have tea in England look like the middle picture, like this one that I'm sort of circling right here with the mouse. Okay, and there's a reason. You take a really good quality biscuit and you dunk it into tea or coffee, and what do you want it to do? You want it to soak up fluid, drip off the excess, take a bite, and it still is crunchy, right? That's a good quality biscuit. The crappy ones, you dunk into a cup of tea and you pull it up and it falls apart and it makes a big mess. Okay, we, we've seen it on TV. In essence, this is what we're doing with our cells. We're turning our cells into sponges for two to three hours after the session. Anything that is in the body is absorbed 20 to 30% more efficiently. Some people it's a little more, some people it's a little bit less. Higher toxic, people that are uh, higher to uh, high, have a higher toxicity, uh, it's less. Lower toxicity people, it's more, okay? Um, so if you have a patient doc that says, oh, you can't doc detox me, I uh, work out five days a week, I take all these supplements, I do all this, my, my body is available. They are wrong. This machine will detox them when they haven't been able to detox. There are deep-rooted toxins that the water uh, uh, has not been able to get to. Certain cell gates are even blocked, closed, impinged. This gets rid of that. Water will get in there and it will detox people. So, so the the... The byproduct here is a couple fold, is any sort of nutrition, any sort of oxygen, anything that you are putting into the body, we want to time it with what we call this electroporation window. T total example, let's just say you're doing oxygen therapy for somebody. We want you to put them on the machine 20, 30, 20 to 30 minutes before you're doing their oxygen because they're going to get a better cellular uptake of the oxygen. 20% more, and you're going to get a better result, okay? Even on as Western as we go, right now at uh, Scripps University in San Diego, they are doing uh, clinical trials on electroporation therapy on head and neck cancers. And what they're trying to do is electroporate tumors and inject small little bits of chemo as opposed to hooking somebody up with an IV and running the chemo through the body. They're trying to use targeted amounts to get a, a bigger result, Okay. So for me, this electroporation, it, it, it has so many different applications. There's so many different conditions, so many different things that we're working on uh, with the body uh, related to this. I mean, I've got one guy in Chicago that is, uh, has Alzheimer's, but is from heavy metal, metal poisoning. So yeah, he's using it for his brain, but he's also trying to detox to get the metals out. And so we have a practitioner there that is a naturopath that's put him on a, a detox program to use with this electroporation. Um, does all of that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. The cell can change some of the sodium back to potassium. We see this, and you'll see this with lots of patients. The inflammatory or swelling response, we get a very fast result. People see it really fast, and they say, wait a minute. How, how is this possible? Is this voodoo or snake oil? No. They are both, they are, they are kissing cousins on the uh, uh, periodic table, if you will. They are interconnected, and one can convert to another. The body does it. We are just doing it a lot faster, okay? And just when we were talking earlier about with water and stuff like that, great, great. You know, as you guys know, patients like to see their progress. So doing these little measurements with the pH paper, seeing that they are less acidic, that they are more alkaline, it, it, it gives, it lets them know that they're, that they have progress, that they're experiencing something, um, Next thing is the electromagnetic pulse is causing the person to generate tiny little microcurrents. I'm sure you felt it when you felt the machine, right? Okay, the microcurrents do two things. They, they run through the neural pathways and they swamp the C fibers from accessing the neural gates. It stimulates the body so much that the pain level that they're in goes away temporarily and permanently.
Okay, on the temporary level, if they have a pain level of eight and they just came in because they have an injury and we use the machine, we initially dial it down to four because we have overwhelmed the neural pathways with this electromagnetic energy. They're too busy with our machine and what's just happened to, to pay attention to that, that pain that's been going on. So the benefit is that the energy that then goes into the cell and does some of the healing can do some work. So when that effect wears off, the pain doesn't come back to the level that it originally was. And you'll, you'll experience that again with the, the patients. The other microcurrent thing that you experience is when you have a rip, a tear, a partial break, anything that is uh, uh, partially disconnected but not completely. And I mean partially torn ligament, partially ruptured tendon. Okay, if you have a, a, a again, I'll, I'll use baseball as an example, a, a pitcher that comes in with a partially torn rotator cuff, they won't need surgery if they use this machine. Okay, from that point, if we were visually inside the body and looking, we would see tiny little lightning bolts jumping from one point to the other where that rotator tear was until it healed. And one day they're going to experience what we talked about at the beginning. Hey, doc, machine's broken. It's not aching or thumping or jumping on my bad spot. And that's because those microcurrents have gone away. We've restored the electrical communication. Um, and then the last thing to talk about in terms of the attributes is the speed of discharge of the pulse. We get a lot of questions. This is like stim. Is this like ultrasound? Is this like tens? Is this like shortwave diathermy? It's not. It's in its own category. Okay. And we can use this machine for long periods of time. We can pulse areas uh, for longer than 15, 20 minutes because we can't, we don't create heat inside of the body. Okay. In physics, there's an equation that uh, boils down to T over time, and you need time to create heat, and that is what creates damage inside of the body, let's say with a laser and with other things. Our machine is exactly like this little example here with the candle, is when we were three, we put our hand on top of the candle and we got burned. And then when we were four, we went, wait a minute, I know how to play with fire. And we moved our finger in and out of the candle, and as long as we kept it at a certain rate, we could play with fire forever and never create heat just playing with energy and in a similar fashion that's that's with our machine is that's why we can use it so long or so frequently or infrequently we don't have to worry about creating heat or injury or damage inside of the body um so that that is the attributes are there any questions about them so far does that make sense all of them yes sir yeah. okay um there are other things in here, again, because our time is limited, I don't want to waste the time of, let me show you how to unscrew this and unscrew that. You can read that and, and learn that. Our time is more important, I think, going over the, the critical points for you guys. Make sure when you get a second just to read the do's and do nots. They are common sense ones, but, it, you know, if for... It, the, the reason they call it common sense is because it's not so common. I've, I've had so many, the, the sports teams are the ones that violate rule number one, don't put liquids or beverages. So many times we get the machine come, comes back because a, a football player put a cup of coffee on it to, to use the machine and forgot about it and they spilt it in there. It happens so often, we had to put it on there. So just, when you get a second, go over those. It's nothing critical, but it's just to make sure, it's, it's again, it, it's more to make sure that you guys are following the right process. Okay, um, let's talk about protocols and how we use the machine. When we're done here, I'm going to be emailing you uh, in, in alphabet alphabetical order a list of conditions. So for example, on the first page, abscess is on the first page. It's gonna tell you, place the coil here, do this, do that. What we're gonna go over is all of the points in that cheat sheet. We're gonna go over all of the different positions and the names so that way you can read the sheet. So for example, we have position one, two, three, and four, we have different positions. So when you read this protocol sheet, it's going to say position one, position two, position three. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, so, so I'm gonna just give you a, a little uh, sort of shortcut here on the general protocol for 90% of the conditions, okay? 90% of the issues, what I'm about to tell you, this is, this is what we follow, okay? There were other issues that require, What's that? Are we supposed to see anything on the screen right now? We lost you on the screen. Yes. Can, ago. You lost me on the screen. Okay, good to know. Hang on one second. Uh, let me just see. All right, can you see me now? Um, hold on, we're trying to... 
Do you want to cancel that? I don't know how. Okay. Okay, we got it. Okay, cool. Cool. And I should have mentioned this is video recording also. So when this is done, I will uh, uh, email this this entire session to you. Hour long video with all the things we talked about in the in the presentation forever. Okay. Um, okay. So again, trapped in an elevator, and somebody asks you, "How does it work for this, or how does it work for that?" With with our machine, okay. And this is super important to understand. The pathology is not as important to us as where in the body the problem is and where it came from. Those are really the only two things in quotes that we care about where the problem is and where it came from. Okay, and I'll give you, I'm going to give you an example and then we'll, we'll tie into. Okay, the protocol for Parkinson's, for autism, for post-stroke, for depression, for bipolar, and for TBI, for traumatic brain injury, is all exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Totally different conditions, totally different ways that they were caused and all that, but the way that we use the machine is exactly the same. Because we are trying to fix a problem in the brain. As simple as that. It's a neurological issue. That's what we're trying to work on. Okay. So that's why we're going to go over this basic concept first. Because if, if, if a year from now, you, um, we are talking every week and you guys are saying this. Okay. Now, what do I do for this shoulder problem? And then I give you the protocol. And you go, okay, got it. Now, what about the back injury? Now, what about the hip? And you guys are asking that question a lot. I haven't done a, a good enough job explaining this concept uh, that I'm about to go over. Okay? So here's what we do for generally everybody when they come in. Joe with a broken toe. Mary with fibromyalgia. Uh, Fred that is facing hip replacement surgery. The first thing that we do is we bring them in and we do position one, two, and three and box the area of need. Okay, I'm going to go over all of that. But what I mean by box and area is we are trying to come from as many angles as possible. So if it's a shoulder injury, we don't want to just do 10 minutes on one spot. It's better to do three minutes, uh, three positions of three minutes, anterior, posterior, and uh, from another way than just at one spot. Okay, and I'm going to show you these coil placements. So everybody, we always start position one chest for the heart, lungs, for the thymus. Okay, and if you see this picture of Igor and Shaq, okay, you see how he has this loop and it's right above his, his collarbone? Shaq mm -hmm. has it right below his collarbone. If you ch try this with yourself, it's a dramatically different sensation. Okay, well, as soon as you get that, that loop a little bit past your collarbone, it all of a sudden becomes stronger. You want it to be not like, to be like Igor, a little bit up, because it will electrically induce all the way out of their shoulders. Okay, we want them to feel mm -hmm. their muscles moving. If it's too strong, if it's too intense, simply back it off, create a little bit of distance. Okay, we want the patient to mm -hmm. be comfortable but still feel it. Okay, position two is for the crown of the head. We want to start above like a halo and have them slowly bring it down until they feel it and where it's comfortable. Some people feel it right in the bridge of the nose. Other people like me, you feel it where you've had dental work. Some people, they pull it right over the head and they don't feel anything. Okay, typically we want it like a halo. Um, if this is uncomfortable, I'll give you an example. My grandmother's 98. So holding this like that for three minutes is not comfortable. Her shoulders get sore. I have her lean forward or lay back in a chair so that way she has support in her arms. Okay, position three is the mid thoracic. Okay, we want it above the tailbone, but below the shoulder blades. We need to do the adrenals, the kidneys, the backside of the liver. Okay, a real good way to understand what this feels like, it's lots of people call this electrical hiccups, which I thought is a real good way to explain it. It doesn't hurt, it doesn't ache, but it makes your body jump around or bounce around. Okay. We do this with everybody, and here's the reason why. If this technology is supposedly using the systems of the body to stimulate healing, if, if, if that's what it is all about, we need to stimulate those areas to help the healing, right? The broken toe doesn't heal the broken toe. It's the systems of the body. So we have found, I mean, these protocols were before my time. There was a gentleman four years of clinical trials in the Philippines, and he developed these protocols before I got involved, and I got involved in the year 2000. So I've always used this because even if you do the, do, you know, do this for yourself, 20 minutes on one spot versus using these, you get a better result. 
okay? Uh, and then we're just, just to show you boxing an area. We literally mean coming from as many angles or as many walls, that's the term box, uh, as possible. So for a shoulder injury, we want to come from the front. We want to do the backside. And the backside, uh, the closer to the spine, the more sensitive it is. So the right side that has a front hip problem, they're going to feel it more on the backside, even if you go on the front. Okay? It's closer to the spine. Um, so again, Bob, we're going to go to the front of the shoulder, the backside of the shoulder arm through the loop or just on the side of the um so if you can see in those examples on both sides we're coming from multiple angles front side back side excuse me, anterior posterior arm through the loop okay and what it does is two things it gives you as the practitioner control by holding the loops uh, initially but then once they get comfortable as the patient, as you see, like with Igor here, they'll take the loop from you because they want to bring it in closer. They want to do it far away. They'll sort of control the distance. As long as we are just their tour guide and make sure they do front, back, and side, that gets the best results. Okay, so what I just gave you, the one, two, three box and area, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, now it's going to sound funny. You know 90% of what I know. Okay, with the protocols and things like that. I use this and we use this for everything. So as an example, I, I know one of the ones you mentioned were gallstones, okay? We already know 90% of the protocol for gallstones. We're going to do positions one, two, and three. And now we're going to box the area where the problem is. So we're going to come right over the front of the liver and the gallbladder area. We're going to go to the left side and we're going to go to the right side. Because as you know, that magnetic field, it's two to three feet on both sides. So you may be anterior to the gallbladder, but that magnetic field, that's going all the way through the body. Okay? The last two spots that we always want to throw in for people, okay, and, and, and as you go through this presentation, you'll see there's a knee, there's hip. We show the different body parts. Okay, but the last two things that we want to make sure is we want them to sit on the loop. If you see here, this position eight right here for about two to three minutes and we want to put their feet in the loop for about two to three minutes so if you will they're sitting down you put the loop on the floor and you put their feet right in the middle okay we're gonna have to get a cover for it <clears throat> okay so when we first talked with uh, what was his name david jack jack um he said, um, uh, you know, in the part of the first few positions, along with the back and the chest, the head, um, this, to put on the stomach, is that the older machine or is that this machine that we have, is that part of the first steps to, like, detox the body? No, I would uh, uh, only go with what I, I've gone over. Okay, okay. So okay. Upper chest and the, mid, the thoracic. Yeah. So those do you want to do those three positions as your initial position one, two, and three? Okay. And okay, and then depending on the issue or the person, then we go from there. So do you want do you want to give me an example of one condition uh, or two conditions right there, and we'll we'll tie it in? A bulging disc. Sure. Okay. So we're going to do positions one, two, and three. Um, and, and let me back up. We, each position is two to three minutes on the person. Okay. With the HD, you guys have the big, powerful machine. Less is more. It's always better for us to go with two-minute sessions and then go up to three than the other way around. Um, and, and I'm going to answer that question. Like I just want to point out the absolute worst thing that can happen is if you use the machine too long, the patient's going to be a little sore in their spots. They may be a little flu-like or a little bit icky the next day if they haven't had enough water. That's the worst that can happen, okay? Um, and, and between you, me, and the wall here, if we have a patient, like, like a fibromyalgia patient, that calls me up the next day and said, oh, my God, I feel like the flu, you know, the last two days, and I've been in the bathroom nonstop, I'm pumping my fist because we're going to have a breakthrough next week. It's, it, it, we're, we've gotten some toxins out that haven't been able to come out, and they're going to be in a great state the following week. Um, so just as an aside, though, though, that's about the worst that can happen. With a bulging disc, we're going to go uh, one, two, and three. 
starting at two minutes. So that's two, four, six minutes of session. And then we're going to box the area. Okay, so we're going to go right over the bulge, okay, at a distance so it's comfortable for them. So visually, if we can imagine, let's say Mary is laying down on her stomach, we could put two or three towels over the and rest the loop right on top. So you can imagine there's four towels creating a buffer so it's not too strong, right? But it's sort of right at that distance. We'll do that. And then like a pancake, we're going to flip her over and put it on the exact opposite side on her stomach. So, you know, could could be any anywhere along the spine that the disc is bulging. We, I, I don't know for this case. I'm just going to assume it's right there in the middle. So we would put it on her gut. And so we're pulsing both sides. We're getting the back of the bulge and we're getting the front of the bulge. Okay. okay. From that point, we want, we want her to then sit on the loop. Okay. In Eastern medicine, there's a meeting of the bones position and basically uh, where the bones connect, it targets a lot of the organ. It targets a lot of things and we're, we're doing that. But we're also, when you sit on the loop, you're like putting energy through the net central nervous system, up through the spine and out. So how, what it feels like is you sit on the loop, you sort of feel the pulse go up your spine and out through, if that makes sense. So that would be the last spot on a bulging disc because we could get that, that third area. So in our, in our head, aim of the condition, our goal is always going to be as many angles of approach as we can get to it. Okay, suppose she came in the first time, we did uh, positions one, two, and three, her front, her back, top of her yep. head, then we go to the bulge disc. How many minutes do we do on the disc? So probably the first time, you'll start at five minutes. Right? So you do five minutes That's right over point. it, and then you'll do... I'm sorry, I lost you there. You it did what? Yeah, a complete a five, five minutes, minutes per position over the disc. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Five. Yes. Yes. So, so uh, this is a great question. So, uh, we'll talk about positions and time just to be clear. So, let's say we're doing two minutes on a spot for her, with the exception of her bad spot. It's going to be two minutes chest, two minutes crown, two minutes mid back. Then we're going to do five minutes right over the bulge, and we're going to flip her over, and we're going to do five minutes anterior to the bulge. That makes sense. And then five minutes sitting. Yes, sir. And then she's finished for the day. Then she's finished for the day. We we give her an extra bottle of water and tell her to call us from the racetrack. No, I'm, I'm kidding about the last part, but <laughs> you know, wherever she's going to go running, is she's going to feel better. And typically, how long does it take before they start seeing results? A session like that, she should stand up and, wow, this is better. My range of motion is better. It feels better. She should experience something after a 20-something minute session like that. She should experience something. Okay. Um, typically, everybody, whether it's 1% or 100%, will get a result after the session. It really just depends on a few factors how much. Okay. I, I want to talk about one other point that will help you guys also, because it, what the patient demonstration is totally different from everything we just talked about. So I'll give you an example, bulging disc person. How do we tell bulging disc person, hey, we've got this new therapy in the office. We think it's awesome. We want you to do 12 sessions this month, and it's 40 bucks a session. Where's your checkbook? Most people in that order, what are, you, what are you talking about? You have a new therapy and you want... They they can't conceptualize what you're asking them to do. So the the single biggest way that I have seen success marketing this machine, and I mean we're talking we as you've seen some of the things we have practitioners that are doing incredible not just results but financially. What they do is this: every single patient they bring back into the room and say, "Okay, Mary. Okay, Fred. We've got a new technology, and we want to give you a, a complimentary five minute demo session." And all the protocols, everything we just talked about, we throw out the window. And all we do is do five minutes on their chief complaint, on their one bad spot. Right? Mary's been coming to you for eight years, and you know she has a hip and a shoulder, and, you know, there's probably some sort of chronic fatigue. But she originally came in because she got in a car accident and she had a hip problem. So we bring Mary back and we say, hey, 
I'm Dr. David. I've been your doctor for X amount of years. I want to try this and see if it uh, if it's going to help you. And you do five minutes on their bad hip. That's it. When they stand up, they're going to feel better. And at that point, it's a lot easier to then approach them about, okay, so Mary, we did five minutes on your bad hip. 10% better. This is great. Normally sessions are 25 minutes and we do them three times a week. And, and it ceases to be that we're selling them a new service and it's almost like we're prescribing them the best therapy. Does that make sense where, what I'm saying? It does. Okay. I, there's a, it sounds funny. We, we made a one page cheat sheet, a stick figure drawing of this concept that I'm also going to send over just to keep as reference. It is the single best marketing tool that we've ever made. All the flyers, brochures, videos, from, from the practitioner standpoint, is giving away that five-minute demo to just so they can get a result on their spot, it, it, it's invaluable. Um, every patient will experience some sort of change. The only patient that won't experience a change, and I know this is a long answer, I'm sure you guys have one or two of them, are the patients that have a mental blockage on healing. They, their, their chief goal is not to get better. Oh. Okay, those are the ones... Right, I'm sure everybody has one. Everybody has one or two of them, um, and and we see them a lot. Uh, one one guy one guy was going to buy a machine and it fixed his shoulder or started to help his shoulder so much he stopped coming because he's going to have to then uh, get off of disability and go back to work. Well, I don't want this to work that well. <laughs> okay, so there's going to be a very 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 small percentage that they don't have the motivation to get better, and that's normal. Okay, uh, in this presentation will be the stick figure drawing that you can see here. As long as you follow that, that's really the, the single best way to introduce the patients uh, to the machine. What, uh, what questions can I answer for you guys? What can we go over? I'm sure there are certain things that have come up. This does not have to be the first session. Typically what we do is uh, after, after I do this, I reconvene a, a, about a month, six weeks in, because once you're using it in the clinic for a while, that's when a lot of the other questions are going to come up, right? We've been treating patient that presented with this problem. We're not seeing enough results. How do we do that? Um, so we're going to do we're going to do this again. Assuming you guys are open to it, but but what can I go over now? What can we talk about now that uh, that that can help? Of course, since I see two hundred to two hundred and fifty people a week, I, I get everything in there. You you name it, I get those sure. type of people. One of the one of the ones that I'm really concerned about are people have tumors in their brain, and the doctor says, well, we can't operate on them. Of course, uh, I use uh, light therapy, too. I use nutrition to help uh, keep the tumors from yep. growing, even shrinking. I fix their blood system yep. so the tumors uh, can't grow on blood anymore. Uh, are you having good results with inoperable tumors on people? So... So uh, obviously there's, there's the asterisk answer to this question because we're in the United States and we have the FDA that likes to get involved with their things. So I'm going to give you an extremely personal example. Um, my dad died in 2011 of COPD. He was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor in 2008. He did not have any brain surgeries or anything like that. He did radiation initially. It made him sick as a dog, so I put a machine next to his favorite chair in his house and he used it basically until the COPD got him. Um, the doctors, the, what they couldn't believe was that for an aggressive, it was a pontual glioma. So I'm not sure if you're aware of those. They're a little bit unique. They're, they're, uh, rather aggressive and they grow in unique shapes and, and forms. Um, it stopped growing. It, it arrested the growth and it never grew from the moment he started using the machine. Other people, um, I have a guy in Australia that bought the machine 2003 and each year when we go to our trainings, we have him come up at the front of the room and speak and show his MRIs and tell his story, how he was sent home to die and get his affairs in order. And now the doctors take all of his MRIs and say, oh, mate, we made a mistake. You must never have had a, a brain cancer. There was probably something wrong with the MRI machine. All those different days that we did all those MRIs because they don't just disappear like that. Uh, I went out to Ohio in 2007 to help a four-year-old girl that had extremely advanced brain cancer. When I got there, she had had paralysis on the right side of her face. She was eating via uh, facial injections, things like that. So I went there, we left the machine there. I trained, I spent a week cheating her and trained the parents how to do it. And she lived three more months and her last month of her life, she ate pizza at her birthday party and birthday cake. And she had not eaten for a year, regular, just 
I mean, I know it sounds strange, but actually just sat down and eaten for a year. So it didn't cure her, it didn't heal her, but parents said that the last three months of her life were the best three months since diagnosis. So I'm giving you a, a, an expanded answer because as you know, everybody's different, everybody responds different. Scientifically speaking, only scientifically speaking, the single best condition this technology should work on are tumors because what it does is it interrupts mitosis. It interrupts cellular division. It fills the cells full of energy so it doesn't go, wait a minute, I'm a low energy cell. I'm about to die off and need to replicate. It says, hey, hang on a second. I'm a liver cell. I should be doing this. And it starts performing or a brain cell. It's regular function. So some cases it's fantastic. Some cases, eh, uh, certainly no harm to it. Okay. okay. In, in my practice, I cure cancer all the time. I use special oil that goes in and kills the virus, and we build up the immune system yep. in the body. So normal cancers, uh, stage one, two, and three, I take care of all the time, usually within six to eight weeks on most people. So when somebody comes in with stage four cancer, I usually don't touch them because their immune system is not strong enough to fight it off. It's a crapshoot. It really is. You, you, yeah. Okay, so what you're saying is, uh, the, are, do, do the uh, percentage of helping stage four people go up that much or not? I don't want to give people hope if there is no hope. No, no, no. That, that, what I'm saying to you is it's, it, it does. That's the thing. It, it, it helps everybody. But as you know, as you know, what we're just talking about. If somebody comes to you stage four and says, Hey, can you save this person? They're bedridden. They can't talk. They're conscious two hours a day and they have full paralysis on the right side of their face. Hmm. We're, we're getting there at the end. So the hope is they, they live a little longer, have a better quality of life, but we don't know we can save them at that point. As you know, with, with four stage, it really is. It's a crapshoot. But then the, the machine, like you said, it opens up the, like the doors and the cells. For the so with uh, the yep. nutrition that he kills the cancer cells, it'll be able to get in yep. to all the cells and also yep. his nutritional. Okay. Yep. Yep. And I just, like, like he said, I, I don't, I never give anybody false hope. So when, when they're on a stage four, what we say, we're, we're hoping for the best. And if the worst thing that happens is they live six months longer, awesome, you know, or their quality of life changes significantly. That's great. I mean, I, I had a guy, and I'm sure you guys have this too. I had a guy that was four stage liver cancer in Australia that bought the machine that once he started feeling better, went back to the bars. That was his whole goal was to get the machine to feel well enough so he could go back out drinking with his Navy mates. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> there's certain people we can't even affect their behavior. You, you know, it's their... Hey, can you fix me while well, I'm still doing the exact thing that has caused this problem? So, you know, in that in that vein. Now, I will tell you this also where there's a unique advantage in what you guys are doing is there's the old spiel about there's nothing that can cross the blood brain barrier. But with this machine, it's B that's BS. We we cross right through the blood brain barrier. It's electromagnetically induced. So the byproduct is that is some of the stuff that you're doing. I, I, I'm not talking scientifically here. I'm certain, though, it's going to be more effective. It has to be because if what you're doing is effective and what we're doing is effective and we're putting it together, the, the marriage of the two is, is going to be even greater. Okay, so this should take them to okay. right after. Now, I've got a family that came in five weeks ago. Three out of the four have sickle cell anemia. What do we got for that? Yeah. Great question. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic disorder. This is... Uh, this is, uh, we're going to do our best. We're going to see how much we can affect it. And if not, they're going to feel great. That's about the worst thing. So, so uh, the, the protocol for, and I'm going to generalize here, okay, so you understand, for general body conditions, how do you treat fibromyalgia, a moving systemic disease, chronic fatigue, Epstein-Barr, Guillain-Barre, MS, sickle cell anemia, leukemia, right? Systemic diseases is we want to energize systemically. So we're going to do the positions one, two, and three. We're going to have them sit on the loop. We're going to have them put their feet in the loop. And that's it. Nothing else. We're targeting all of them. Nothing else maybe it, it, to uh, try and kick the spleen in more to, uh, to work on the blood cells. Um, remember when I was talking about uh, uh, using your intuition? That's, that's where this is going to come into play. 
Okay. Typically, here's the thing. Just doing what I told you right there, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. That's about a 15 minute session right there. That's about a half a session. Okay. So the only thing that I, you want to avoid is giving them an hour treatment the first time or two hours. So it's going to wipe them out. So uh, feel free to move the loop around. Feel free to do those things. Just try to keep it within that 20 to 30 minute session the first couple times. Um, a lot of times what the practitioners will do, and I'm giving you a long answer to this, is they will start with, just example, the sickle cell people. We know they're, let's say we know they're coming in for six sessions. So the first session, they will only do the one, two, three. They will do that 15 minute session to build up to do a longer session. So you might want to try that also. Feel, feel free to experiment to do those things uh, uh, a little bit with all of these. Um, Generally speaking, you want to uh, keep keep it under the thirty minute range, but the the coil placement is going to come in with with two factors: your intuition, what we've talked about, but also the results of the previous sessions. So, in the in your welcome pack, there's a there's a, a, a email kit that's coming to you guys that has a treatment tracking forms. So it has a little stick figure front and back with notes. So if Joe is working in the clinic this week. They will keep notes and you can replicate the same treatment or you can deviate from it uh, from there. Okay. I get a lot of autistic kids in. Now, of course, we use light treatment under their nose to stimulate the paraplegic reflex up in their brain yep. to make their tongue and brain work together like it's supposed to. We also yep. uh, stimulate and strengthen their thyroid and their heart. All these kids have thyroid yep. and the heart problems. So we do yep. all of that also. What uh, protocol would you use with this also to help these autistic kids? And have you seen much result with with these? I'm I I almost don't want to answer it, and I just want to say, tell me what you see after you do it, because I don't want to hype it up. Okay. Some some children, it's life changing. Okay. If all you do is is you hear the first time, well, I don't know if it helped my son, but he sat still for the twenty minute treatment and he didn't move. That's dramatic. Okay, you will see things like that. Um, speech patterns will change. You know, I, I, instead of hyping up, I just want you you to treat it and try it. But I'm going to ping it back to you just to see because we were talking about it. What do you think the protocol for autism would be based on what we worked on? Well, of course, the the regular positions one, two, and three, and, and probably sit on the loop and then put it around his feet and leave him at that. One, one other spot. So in these cases, we always want to box the area of need, right? So the only thing we want to do is we want to box their head. So we're going to do one, two, three. We can have them sit on the loop, and then we're going to... Okay? Now, obviously, I don't have a loop in my hand, but you can visualize. And that's four positions, okay? You will see over time, People that have different neurological disorders will visually respond different based on where the coil is placed. Because obviously we're stimulating different areas of the brain and all of that. So again, we, we're, we're just boxing an area. So autism, Alzheimer's, post-stroke, one, two, three, box the head and sit on the loop. Because again, it's, it's the area of concern. How many minutes each time around each part of the head? Sure. So unless noted otherwise, uh, like I said, in the sheet that you're going to get, there are certain things where it's going to say five minutes or ten minutes, like what we talked about. Each position is two to three minutes, and that is based on, and the reason it's two to three minutes is size, weight, previous health history is, is a factor. My grandmother is two minutes. Shaq is three minutes, first of all. Okay. What about optic nerve okay. damage? Same, same thing. We're going to do position one, two, and three. We'll have them sit on the loop. And assuming it's on this side, we're going to come from here. We're going to come from here. We're going to come from here. Okay. Um, you will find with anything related to the face, retinitis pigmentosa, optic nerve issues, sinus problems, dental issues, they feel it more on the opposite side of the coil for some, uh, the, the opposite side of the issue for some reason. So if they have a dental problem here, they bring the loop right there and they go, oh, I don't feel it that much. And then they bring it on the opposite side of the problem. They go, whoa, what'd you do to me? Or example, 
if this person has an optic nerve issue here and we bring the loop here, eh, I don't feel it so much. And then we come from another side, like here, and they go, whoa, what did you do? And they feel it more. Okay. And so again, part of uh, the reason that we're doing different spots in different areas is to get that response from the person. We want them, whoa, I feel it right in that area. Okay. What about glaucoma? Glaucoma is a fantastic responder. Um, position, the, it is literally going to be the exact same protocol that we just did. Position one, two, three, box the eyes. What kind of results have you seen with glaucoma? Any sort of circulatory issue uh, uh, with the eyes results. Anything that is non-circulatory, it's okay. It's only okay. Glaucoma responds fantastic. Cataracts responds fantastic. Retinitis pigmentosa, uh, which is a unique one, responds fantastic. Um, it, it, it is all circulatory based. Presbyopia responds great to this machine. Operators who have been around this machine, the, the if you will, the lady in the clinic who treats everybody for five years, their, their prescriptions get better because their eyes are able to focus better. And how often can you do the treatment for that? Do you have to wait every two days or can you do it every day? Here's the thing. You can try it every day. And in fact, try it on yourself every day. The only issue you run into is maybe the third day, then it goes the other way. You start to feel flu-like. You start to feel achy. You can over-energize yourself where the cells are open up, that they're constantly detoxing. Okay? So you typically after about two days, three days in a row, that's where it goes. Yeah, it is just far more effective and efficient to give that space in between. You know, if, if you think okay. about it this way, we want an on period and an off period. We want those cells stimulated, open, doing their stuff, but then we want them closed, resting, and actually working with that energy. Okay, what if they come in with a bacterial infection? Get them on the machine. Position one, two, three, box the, box the gut and any other area that may be affected. Oh, okay. And okay, so I noticed I did it twice. I used the machine twice, um, yep. and I waited. I uh, I waited like one or two days in between the two times, and mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I and I only did each spot. I did like the head, the you know, I did the position one, two, three. Um, I didn't do the feet or any sit on it or anything, but I noticed. Um, I got, I, after the first time, I got, I felt real miserable, and then that night, I couldn't sleep, and then the second, the f second time I did it, um, I was just up all night, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't get, how sleep. late in the day did you do it? I did it before I went to bed, like around 9, 10 at okay. night. Okay, so yeah, that first thing, I, I mean, tip. Typically, I don't put this in. I don't say this to people because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, it's at the clinic. It's there from 9 to 5, and that's it. They don't have access to it. This will happen. If you do it too late at night, you're going to go to sleep like this. Okay. Right? Because of energy right? your cells, right? Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. So if you do it right before you go to bed, it's going to energize the, the you-know-what out of you, and you're going to feel ready to go. My, my grandmother, she cleans the house each time that I give her a treatment. Because oh, wow. it, it boosts her energy level to the point where, okay, now she, she always cleans the house. That's that's her thing. So definitely don't do it in the evening. Do it during the day. Stuff like that. Do it first thing when you come in the morning. Um, and the other thing is how much water do you drink or how toxic are you? Um, I I mean, I drank a couple. I drank a large glass of water before, like maybe like 12 ounces to 16 ounces. And then I drank one after. Um, but, and I did, I didn't do it very long, the treatment. I did it for a few minutes on each spot. And then, yep. um, Jack, wasn't Jack? Jack was telling us yep. that, you know, if you do it long, you'll maybe go to the restroom excessively. Um, so that whole week I did use the restroom excessively. And then also, um, throughout the entire week, I had sharp pain in the spots that I do have issues with. So I, that's a good yep. sign because it's worth you know, um. it, it, it. It is, and it's, it's good that 
I, I hate to say it's good that you've experienced this, but it's good because you're going to be able to communicate this to patients and people now going forward. You're able to understand what some of the stuff that they're going to experience. Um, okay. I, w I will have burn victims, and it's in. When you get the protocol sheet, you'll notice burn victims, second, uh -huh. third degree burns. I mean, I'm, I'll get serious burn victims. Their first few sessions, they don't feel anything. And maybe about the third or the fourth session, we go from a full session, like a 30-minute session, to a five-minute session. Because all of a sudden, we've restored some of the nerve function, and we don't know which nerves are turned back on. And the, the treatment is very intense. The last thing that there's, mm -hmm. there's experience, we're burning. So all of a sudden, I haven't had pain up and down this, this arm burn for five years. What did your machine do? Wasn't our machine created more pain, we've restored some nerve function that's now experiencing something. Um, so keep all this in mind as you use this on people because that's where, uh, again, where I was going back to the doctor's intuition and what you guys are doing, the knowledge and the experience with your patients comes into play. Okay. Okay, now we've got the other accessories here also. Uh, we yep. got the uh, small yep. loop. We got the blanket. Explain to us how we use those quite often. Sure. If you don't mind. Sure. So, no, not at all. The blanket, uh, the blanket is systemic stuff. Okay. So when we're talking about, and again, I'm generalizing chronic, chronic uh, fatigue, fibromyalgia, Epstein-Barr, Guillain-Barre, MS, systemic issues throughout the body. Another way that we can utilize it, instead of doing one, two, three, and boxing all these areas where we're trying to mm -hmm. systemically energize them, we can treat them, if you will, like a pancake. We wrap them in the front side for six to eight minutes, and then we flip them over, and we do it on the other side. It's a very good way to give mm -hmm. a systemic session. Okay. Uh, the rope coil, the one, it's a long wire, if you will. It, yeah. That is designed to wrap around an area of need that needs something a little bit more targeted. So gallbladder, gut issues, things like that. A lot of the times what we do is we connect one end. We have the patient stand or sit near the machine, and then we wrap it around, let's say, their midsection five or six or seven times and then plug the other end in and uh, funny enough it's less boom boom pulse and more tap tap over multiple areas so that is another way in which to get angle of approach the accessories uh, are also they they help with preventing or when you run into plateaus okay because with every treatment you can run into this and this is also where the accessories come into play um the small one, there's the one that has a, that's a little Velcro uh, uh -huh. neoprene pouch. Okay, with the electromagnetic field, uh, the smaller and more focused sessions sometimes are far more effective because we can get it right on the spot. Okay, so two things I want you to try. Uh, first of all, that, that applicator, that can come out of the Velcro and neoprene. You can take that out, so if you ever need to wash it or you want to get a smaller or harder to reach area, that can come out. One test that I want you to do with this so you can it, conceptually so you understand what it does is take that loop, take, take it out of the Velcro, take the loop, turn the machine on, and put it in between your hands like this, like the praying position. Can, you can see me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you do the praying position. And it's going to be very minimal. You're going, ah, I don't feel it that much. Okay? Then I want you to take that, that loop, double it over so you figure eight or infinity symbol, and fold it in half. So what you've done is instead of two medium-sized circles, you've made four small ones. And then do the exact same thing, the praying position. You're going to go, whoa, what did you do? It feels like I, I have laser shooting out of my hands. All of a sudden, you're going to feel the pulse thumping from both sides. And the reason I want you to do that is because of thing like plantar fascia. Okay, that is a small, hard-to-reach problem in a heel, in an arch. So those big loops, those aren't effective. Those aren't really effective. Okay, it's like, uh, those are like skipping a pebble in the ocean, right? Small little waves. When we take this applicator and we fold it over and make it small and then put it right on their heel where their heel pain is, that's like dropping a rock in a puddle right in front of you, right? Same thing. They're all of a sudden going to go, whoa, I feel it right in the bad spot in my arch, my heel. And it's a far more targeted, focused treatment. And then on top of that, we don't want you guys to have to sit there and hold the loop. It's designed because you're seeing lots of people. So you take that Velcro neoprene sleeve, you put the applicator in there, and you wrap it and leave it on their knee, their their hip, their elbow. Their, uh, we call it the joint wrap so it can get to spots. Um, and then the last last part with that is 
uh, give you an example. When I first met my wife, this is how she used the machine to, to treat her neck. And then once we started dating, it was here. And then we got engaged, it was here. And now that we have kids, it was, it was here and she was able to use it. Okay. It's such a strong machine and there's a comfortability factor that if we can make it more comfortable for them, great. So somebody with a neck problem, an Atlas issue, L4, L5, a small targeted issue, that big loop, that might be too strong for them, right? To, to, to bring over here and get to that one, to get to that one spot. It, you know, yeah, I can feel it, but it's hurting everywhere else. So if we take this applicator and we either fold it over and double it or leave it as it is, and we have this small thing, we can then bring it right on a spot. And then we can get right into the core of the issue without it being too strong or uncomfortable in any of the other uh, areas. Does that, does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if, they, so if they come in with a knee problem and uh, instead of using the big loop, can you just wrap that thing around their knee and, and get it all at one time? You got it, and in this document, it's going to show. It's going to show you instead of having to do three minutes and three minutes. That's that was the design. It wraps around and it covers two positions at once. It covers the front and one of the sides. So all you would do instead of doing, you just rotate it ninety degrees. That's that's what that's what uh, they were invented for. We didn't design the technology or the loops. It was hundred year old from Tesla. But what we did do was make these applicators based on what you just said. The feedback of can we do this? Can we do that? So we just made them that way. So do you charge your food too or just your water? I charge my food. Here's another test for you to do. This this will blow you away. Get two apples or two bananas because they are great with oxidation. Pulse pulse one, don't pulse the other and wait the next day. And with the bananas, either open them up or the apples, take a bite of both of them and set them on the counter and let nature happen. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. It's okay. it's dramatic the results. When my I mean I'll, I'll tell you when when one of the first times my wife met me, she, uh, I, I was, how we met is we, I was living with a mutual friend. I was roommates with a mutual friend. One of the first times she comes over, she sees this funky machine and a loop on a chair. And if you will, on top of the loop is a watermelon, our berries, and some of my other produce, right? And the machine makes this funky noise. So she walks in and I'm sure whatever, I, I couldn't even imagine what she was thinking, right? But you will see if you treat your food, if you treat stuff like that, it lasts longer. The quality is better. How many minutes? Uh, there's, uh, I treat it like I, funny if I treat it like a human. If it's a small little bottle, I'll do ten minutes. If it's like a case of water or a jug, I'll do twenty minutes. Um, you just set the just, the case, yep. charge it like that. Yep. Or or uh, what what we found is the Velcro one is just about the right size of either a wine bottle or those elongated water ones. And you could wrap it around with the Velcro and, and not have to hold it either. Um, there's a company in the Netherlands that makes a product called Pulse Master. And they have a much more powerful version of our machine, but it's not a health device. It is a food processing machine that uh, they basically, all of the food that would come down a conveyor belt, they've built a pulse machine in through there. So during the entire time of the food processing, it's getting electromagnetic therapy treatment. So it made me realize that I wasn't quite so crazy when there's a company that has actually built a product and is, and is doing it out there in the real world. Okay. And um, what about people with, does it help people with weight loss in any way? Because we get a lot of, like, pretty obese people in there, you know, and they have a lot yep. of issues with the Sure, sure. Glandular issues like uh, uh, hypothyroid. There's a good example of one. People have weight issues because of uh, uh, improper thyroid will be awesome. Um, this helps with the pituitary function. It helps with a lot of things. It stimulates and activates the metabolism. So if somebody is in a weight loss program, they're exercising, they're doing everything, and all we do is add the machine in, they're going to get a good result. Okay. But the one thing I, I always have to say there is, is, as you know, the diet, the exercise, the other stuff they're doing is key. If they add in the machine, they can't go, cool, now I can eat a Baskin-Robbins every night I'm set. Yeah, okay. So um, also for people like with thyroid uh, problems, yep. thyroid disorder, um, do you just put the ring around your neck? And yep, so I, out there? the... the the third month I was around with this machine in 2001, I lost 90 pounds. And my parents freaked out and they thought, oh my God, he finished college and moved to LA and now he's a drug addict. And I had to explain to him, no, 
I've had hypothyroid since I was 13. I've been on Synthroid. And all I did was stop taking this thyroid medication and it happened to be around this technology doing position one on my chest, which is right where the thyroid is. And the weight came off like mm -hmm. water. It completely changed my life. So that's, again, that, I have a couple of stories. That's my thyroid story. Um, it's, it was dramatic. And, and, and you guys will find, I mean, just as you've experienced, this is a strong machine. It is a strong machine. So even a few minutes of treatment, it, it goes a long way. So yeah. we can always start at 10 minutes and work up to 15 as opposed to starting at 30 and dropping down to 10. We can, it, it is a strong machine. And even if we're not feeling it, I get this a lot. I, you treated my feet for 20 minutes and I didn't even feel it. I don't think this machine works. But then the next day they call us and their feet haven't felt that this good in years. Just because they don't feel it doesn't mean it's not working, just because, as you know. Okay. Also, um, you said before about dental problems, so it can help with dental issues. Like, what, yep. are, what are, like, for me. I'll give you my story here. I, okay. Yep. No, no, go ahead and I'll tell you my, my story, how they, how they got me with this. Okay, because um, recently, like, all four of my wisdom teeth have been pushing up. They go up and down. Um, but yep. one of them is on a nerve right now, and I don't want to – I don't want – I'm afraid of the dentist. I don't want to get them cut out. And I, I noticed I couldn't even put the machine near my head because my wisdom teeth – it really – like, I yeah. had it, like, a foot away, and it really – It was painful. stumping. Yeah. So, does, yep. you know, like, in what way – Help dental issues. I'm wondering. Sure. Like so depends on like, it... depends on the problem. I'll, I'll give you my my story. I had a dry socket for a year. I had my wisdom teeth removed, and uh, the one of the holes didn't heal. So I walked around literally with a hole in my mouth doing this for a year mm -hmm. because it would fill with saliva. And if I didn't do that, it, I, I would start to drool. I was a broadcasting major. I went to school to be a sportscaster. Not very conducive for somebody that wants to be on television to say, and in today's news, what we were experiencing was, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was ridiculous trying to make a video or doing an internship. I discovered this machine. Uh, I worked for them for a while. And basically the guy who, who is responsible for all this, he was six foot five. He boxed me in a corner and said, I'm tired of hearing you slurping around the office all day long. You're using this machine. He made me treat my face two days in a row. And after the second treatment, it healed it completely. It closed the wound. And uh, it wow. blew me away. I spent a week doing this. Feeling for where the hole had moved. Because certainly it didn't heal anything. It's just in hiding. And I, gen I, I seriously mm -hmm. believe that. Because we can't. Sometimes they, you know, it's unbelievable. So it healed my dry socket after a year and spending literally like the last th 5000 bucks that I had for my student loans to, to, to fix my dental work and nothing worked and this machine fixed it in a week um other issues nerve related issues uh, uh certain types of uh, uh root canal will respond mm -hmm. um i have two holistic dentists that have bought our machine and use it as part of their regular treatment with patients um one of them does it uh, to get out um when they do root canals because a lot of the time now now with root canals the problem is is the the Bacteria, all the stuff gets trapped in there. You you clean it out once, they cap it, and now what they're doing is trapping all of the bad stuff in there. So how do you get inside something that's been closed? How do you right? How do you sterilize something that you can't access to? Electromagnetic conduction. This machine goes right through it. Um, my guess with you is, you know, we, we can't move mountains. My guess is if you use it at a great distance. I mean, do it so far away, you just want to barely feel it. Barely feel it. Okay. Because even barely feeling it, trust me, that mag we've, we've tested that magnetic field. That magnetic field goes four to five feet in both directions. We just stop feeling it about halfway through. So even here, okay. you're get, you are getting a treatment. Okay, just at a slight distance so you're barely, barely feeling it and sort of work your way up. Okay, I don't know if it can prevent what you need done because I don't know exactly what you need done, but, but for sure it's going to help moderate your pain. You know, where, where you okay. don't have to live off... Uh, you know, people live off or gel and all of this stuff that they have to take. It, it should at minimum moderate that. Okay. And then also, um, there were gloves in there. <laughs> and I'm wondering, Good question. do we need to wear them? Yeah. <laughs> no. So there's two things I was required to do uh, for regulatory. One was that third button. And the other is provide gloves for the changing of the applicators. 
I am supposed to provide, it's a static machine. So you could, in theory, get a static discharge. You know, it's windy and you touch metal and you go, ooh, I'm not supposed to have that with the machine. So I'm supposed to provide gloves. So that that way, if you use the gloves, it's not possible. I never use them. So you don't have to use them, but I, I did my job in providing them. Okay. And then also, um, because we have so many people that come into David's office every day, and yep. I guess whoever's off the scene, is it going to have any, like, negative side effects if I'm operating the machine for new people all day, every day? Since no. I'll be right no. next to that energy. Okay. No, the only thing to do, though, the only thing that we want to do is consciously when you come in to, to work maybe the first week or so, drink drink extra water okay. when you first get there in the morning. Just so whatever had made you feel, yeah, that first time, we get it all the way out and then you're good. Okay. And then um, also, am I asking too many questions, dude? No. No. When, um, okay. So like how I felt, I did, like you said, flu-like symptoms. I felt like I had gotten the flu or something kind of, and I was just my whole body and, you know, whatever. Um, Thank you. Does that mean that I'm really, I was really toxic? So are, are people who are really, just really unhealthy and pretty obese, are they going to have a real rough time after the first couple treatments? Should I warn them of that? So, so typically, now we're getting into, remember I was talking about sometimes we start slow and work their way up. This is why. Yeah. Because some people that you may anticipate, hey, this is Mary, man. She's had two back injuries. She's She took painkillers for 10 years before she ever came to us. Like, she's going to be... Be, she's a toxic person. Better to go slow and start and do a 10, 12 minute session where they go, gosh, yeah, I, I felt a little bit better than the exact opposite happening. So a 10, 12 minute session with water is where we start them. Okay. Now, once that we clean them out, I'm just using Mary's example. Once she's had six or seven sessions or, or whatever that number is, we're not going to have to worry about it again because we've gotten those particular toxins out. It, it's come out. Okay. okay. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. Work, work your way into it. Go slow with some of these people that you anticipate. It could be that they go through a strong detox. Okay, great. Okay. And you said... Um, I want to give you guys... Yes. Electrolytes are awesome with our machine. Okay. Okay. Sodium, potassium, so, calcium, so magnesium. Yeah, do you have to unplug this machine? It said something about unplugging it every time you're not using it. No. Uh, no, you know what uh, What it is, is so there's certain procedures like here's how you disconnect the connectors or here's how you do that. So what that is, is this is the procedure, how you're supposed to, to do it. Again, you don't have to unplug and disconnect the machine every time. I think I'm just required to put stuff like that in the manual. Okay. Now, I've got a problem in my legs. I can only raise yes. my legs up about six off the ground. They're locked in in my groin area. I, yep. I, I have trouble walking. Is there a special protocol to get these legs to release besides what we've talked about? I would do what we've talked about with the sitting of the loop. I would do front of your hips. And the last thing that I would do is we want to get that pulse deep into your hip sockets. So I want you to take the loop and do each leg like a pair of pants. I want you to pull it on all the way up. I'm assuming you can see me. To the hip socket. Okay, and you'll have that loop up here, and believe me, you're going to feel it right in, in the hip. Do it on both sides. Every other day, and for how long? Every other day, we want to do about two to three minutes on each spot. So ideally, if we're going to do the one, two, three, let's say we're going to do two, four, six. We're going to have you sit on the loop, which is eight. We're going to do both fronts of the hip, which is 10, 12, and then we want you to do your both legs through the loop, so 14, 16. And again, the reason that we're doing two minutes is we want to start here. We don't want to over-energize you the first time. We don't know how you respond. I don't want you to go, oh, my God, I felt like crap for the last week. I, I, I don't know how you're going to respond. So we could do three minutes, which is what we eventually want to work up to, three minutes on each spot. But we'll start, again, we're starting with two just because I, I, I don't know. You know, I don't know, you're, I don't know how you're going to respond. It's better to start less. If you feel comfortable doing three minutes and ignore what I said and do three minutes on each spot. Okay. I've already been using this now for six days already straight. Great. Great. No, no negative effects, no detox, anything like that. 
Well, I've had a cold for a week, but it was already coming on when I first used it. Yep. So I yep. Don't know so if, if that was getting it or if no, I was well, just getting sick anyway. It's a good question. I get I get this a lot. God, I've been using the machine a lot, and I get a runny nose. We that will happen a lot if you're detoxing or lymphatic drainage. I I obviously, obviously have no clue if it's if it's one or the other, but I'm just putting it out there because that is one of the other things too. Is we get runny noses. Um, I mean, here, here's what I would suggest is give it a good session today based on everything that we experienced. Give yourself a good full session and then take tomorrow off on yourself and see how you respond now. Okay. I also got high blood pressure. Uh, where do we use it for the blood pressure? Last time I checked a week ago, I was uh, 216 over 130. So you want to do the positions one, two, and three, and then you want to do both inner thighs, the inner left thigh and the inner right thigh. Okay. Yeah, then I'm the glaucoma guy, too. I've got it in my left eye. So, like you said, I just move it around on the different positions. And I do that every other yes. day, or do you do that every day? Yes. Yes, every other day. Okay. What else? Uh, and also, I want to give you guys this. Write, write this down. This the one thing for some reason is not in the presentation. Let me give you guys my cell phone number because I'm literally like on my cell phone all day long answering protocol questions, doing this stuff. It is the fastest and best way <clears throat> best way to get a hold of me. So if something comes up, you can text me. You can send a message to my phone, and I'll be able to give you an answer or something really really quick. Okay, it's uh, it's area code eight zero five. 341-4902. I can even leave a voice message? You can even leave a voice message. <laughs> okay. Well, good. We hope to see great results with this. I mean, we may have to line up six or eight or ten of these things in the clinic then if we really get going. Great. Hey, I, I'm happy once once we hear that you guys are getting good results. Please, please keep in touch. And anything that comes up, don't hesitate. Call, write, text, send smoke signals uh, from the mountain. Um, but obviously, let's let's hear how it goes in the next next couple of weeks because uh, obviously, I wanted to get you guys as effective and efficient as possible. Okay. Now, can we do spot treatments? If somebody comes in, they only got five ten minutes. They say, "I got this one problem here in my knee or yep. my elbow." Can you just absolutely you can. Yep, absolutely you can. And here's here's another one. Joe just fell in the parking lot and broke his arm. Do we have to do position one, two, and three and all that crap? No, he has a broken arm. Put it right over his broken arm. He's he's in agony, and you can see his bones sticking out one way. Don't waste your time with one, two, and three. Put it right over where the injury is. Absolutely, do the do the spot yeah. treatments. I mean, as an example, I, I'm I'm my kid's little league t-ball coach, and I, I'm I'm old for my age for baseball. So before I go out, I do five minutes on my arm, so I don't throw my arm out or do something ridiculous before I play, and I do a spot treatment there. So things like that, absolutely. Okay, we get a lot of little kids in that need a lot of treatments too. You have a form that we're able to have them fill out so that we're not. I do. I have an. On the face. Yep, I. That, that's right. I do. I have an informed consent that I'll send over that outlines those things. Oh, great. Okay, you've never had any uh, ill ill results with kids, even babies. I think I heard you say we could, it, it doesn't hurt anybody, right? Doesn't hurt anybody. Um, if you guys ever see any videos of my kids and all that, they're six and a half and four and a half, and they have been using the machine since five or six weeks of conception, since since we knew, oh, there's something swimming in there, and my wife told me I put the machine on them. So now they go to the trade shows, and they put it on themselves, and they, they teach everybody else how to use it. So if they're pregnant, they're six, eight, nine months pregnant, they come in just ballooned up, and they've got all kinds of pain. There's no problem with the little one or anything else. It's all, the it's all political. Still fine, right? Yep, it's it's all political stuff. We we just make sure that they sign the consent form. That's the single biggest thing. Okay, and then um, um, what was I gonna? Oh, with uh, I just I can't remember it. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, I have to go get Ruby. Okay, I can't remember it. I lost it. Okay. Okay. So when when it pops back in, email. Hey, thank you guys, and please email, text, call when questions come up. Feel free. Feel free. If, if this pops back in your head, uh, reach out, and I'll get you the answer. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I will send you this video here shortly. And again, thank you guys for everything, and we'll talk to you soon.
Hopefully, he may-